G'day, Trupacodi and Steve, and we're going to tell you something about the light horse that you can perhaps tell your grandchildren or your children to make it a bit of a game, maybe. And that is because in the First World War, the Australian light horse were highly successful in the Middle East, in the desert, because they were such exceptional bushmen. The French soldiers, German soldiers, British soldiers, they were all great soldiers, but so many of them came from inner cities, perhaps from slums, had never sat on a horse. The Australian light horse was a little different because most of these blokes were highly self-sufficient. They were way, way out in the bush, no telephones, no telegraph, no nearby hospitals, no first aid, they had to do everything themselves. And so, here's a few things that they did in the First World War, and this is where perhaps you can have some games with your grandchildren or your children. So how do you find north? No mobile phones, no compass maybe, not everyone carried a compass. So the easy way to find north is you just take your watch, you've got to have a watch, that's the thing, you take your watch, and you point the 12 at the sun. Then you look at the hour hand. And if the hour hand is 3 o'clock, then that's 3 o'clock there. So halfway between the 12 and the hour is where north is. And that's how they knew very easily how to find north. It's so simple. If you are above the equator in the northern hemisphere, then you have to reverse that. But in Australia, dead easy to find north. So the next thing is, how long you're out riding? How, how, how long before sunset? So what, what you do is you look at the horizon. You take one finger and you place the finger on the horizon. And then you add another finger and another finger and a fourth finger. And if at four fingers resting on the horizon, Finally, your top finger, bottom finger on horizon, top finger is now touching the bottom of the sun. Well, each finger is 15 minutes, so you have one hour till sunset. If it's six fingers, you've got an hour and a half to sunset. That's how they knew how long before the sun would set. If you're looking at something that you're in the distance that you're coming to, and it's a ridge perhaps and it's quite sheer, it's a fair way off and you wonder how high that cliff is. Should you already be starting to go around or will you be okay? So what you do is you take it, you just pick up a stick and you put your fingers where you're holding the stick on the bottom of the object and then you bring the stick down until it's on the top of the object. So my fingers are on the bottom of the cliff and the top of that stick is right at the top of the cliff and then you lie it down on its side and when you then lie it down on its side on the ground in the distance you are able to estimate how far that is therefore you know how high the cliff was. How do you want to, you want to find out just how far something how far something is away from you. I don't know if you've ever done this thing where you put up a, put your thumb up, put it on a, close one eye and put your thumb on an object. Then swap eyes. You will find your thumb has jumped either to the left or the right. When you've done that, mark on the ground where your thumb jumped to. Estimate that distance. So I'm looking at a tree down there. I put my thumb up. I change thumbs. I think it's about 10 metres. You now times that by 9. And that shows that the tree I was just looking at is 90 metres away. How did they get way out in the bush and not get lost? It's because of a thing that's called the fall. 
everywhere here, and if you looked around our farm, there's the fall everywhere. The fall is the ground drops away to the left, drops away to the right, drops away in front of you. The fall always leads you to the lowest point. You can follow the fall to a creek, and then you'll see that that follows onto another creek, that follows onto a river. So the other thing, opposite of fall, you can always see the rise. As you're travelling up a rise, you finally come to a spot and you realise, wow, there is nowhere around here any higher. That's called the divide. It's because you've come up. You're at a height, you're going to go down. That's the divide. Hence, the great divide. This is how they could work out where they were going because they always knew that they were following a downhill slope that led to a creek, that led to a bigger creek, that led to a stream, that led to a river, would eventually lead to the sea. Sounds complex talking about it. When you've been doing it for years, it became second nature. But what happens when there perhaps is no fall because you're on a completely flat piece of ground? You want to make sure you're not walking in circles. You pick an object in the distance and you pick another object behind it. Not one, but two. That's how you line up a straight line. Before you get to the first of those two, you have to pick a yet another object that lines up. You have three in line. Then you can walk past the first one because you can still see two. And you keep doing that and you will be always in a straight line because you are always lined up with at least two, sometimes three. Okay, you say, Cody, you're so clever. What about if there aren't any objects? Well, the other thing you can do is just start very small, smoky fires. Start a fire, have your second fire, go past the second fire, look back at the two little smokes you've passed, start another one, go again. You know, they're only small, it's not a lot of smoke. But that is enough, again, to keep you in a straight line. There's some things that the light horse did to survive without social media, modern phones, modern technology. If you've been liked the video, subscribe, make a comment. Till next time, cheers, thank you.